The next part of this series is applying the finish to the table. So just to recap, the underside of this table was finished to 240 grit from 120 to 240, not skipping any grits with granite. The top side was 120 to 1000, again, not skipping any grits. Um, and just a reminder, one more time, because of the figuring in the wood, the first round of sanding was done by Rotex on the core setting. And again, that got all of the scratch marks out from the sander. All right, but now let's get to the finish here. So I'm gonna just take you back for just a moment, try to keep this as brief as possible, kind of where it all started for me and I'll get to what I use now. So I started with Sam Maloof Poly Oil finish. That was about six years ago when I first started. And I love the finish, I really enjoyed using it. Um, it worked well, smelled great, and I actually have it on the first table I made that's still in my home. And it's held up extremely well, no issues. It's been really durable. So the only reason I got away from that was I was, you know, as I learned more about woodworking, you know, I just wanted to try more, more products or try something new. And a uh, somewhat local woodworker, Corey Morgan, uh, from Corey Morgan Woodworks, which if you haven't checked him out or don't know about him, um, which if you probably know about me, I'm sure you know about him, but if you haven't, Corey's work is incredible. Honestly, he was the first woodworker that I ever really sat down and spoke with uh, about six years ago, and he was so you know willing to give up his time to help me and talk with me and just share about his, you know, what he does and how he's gotten to that point. But anyways, you know, Corey's, uh, you know, kind of a starting point for me where I really saw what, what you could do. And, um, you know, really I just found him very inspiring what he does and how he does it. So anyways, I could go on for a long time about Corey and the work he does, but if you haven't checked him out, you know, check out Corey's work. He, he does awesome work and, and he's a great guy to go with it. But anyways, what I was bringing that up for is he was using at the time, or he was using, I believe still does, Rubio Monaco. And so that was, uh, you know, I saw the quality work he does and the level of work he does. So I figured, let me give Rubio a try. And I really did like it. In fact, it's on my dining table. Um, the first pedestal dining table I made, it's on that. And that's in my house. And it's been extremely durable. It, that table has had so many gatherings, you know, celebrated on it. And it's held up extremely well. Uh, you know, not a single ring mark from glasses. Nobody used coaster on it. We don't do anything to protect it. The finish has been extremely durable. So why did I get away from it? Well, there was two issues I had, or just two things I just didn't like. For me, I found the smell, um, you know, just honestly made me nauseous. So I'm trying to keep this simple. I didn't like the smell. And they only recommend that you stand up to 120, maybe 150 and 180 at the most which I don't, you know, didn't love. So those were the two main reasons I got away from it. But again, I have nothing bad to say as far as the durability. Uh, it is extremely durable product and I can tell you that firsthand. I have it in my own house on a piece and many other homes uh, I, I have pieces in that I use that product on because I used it for a couple years. So that's why I got away from it. I don't remember who did, but somebody recommended Odie's oil when I was in that process of trying to find something that really wasn't making me nauseous. Because honestly, I was working in my basement at that time and that was my original workshop and I had no way to get any fresh air in there. And so it, it really was a problem for me. So that got me to Odie's oil. Uh, but I'll just real quick, I'm gonna take a step back or a little side note about Rubio. I'm actually using it on a product project right now that's in this shop. So. Again, uh, I'm actually using their pre-color easy. So that is one thing I like. They do have pre-set uh, stains that clients can choose from. Uh, so I did just use it on a project because I don't really have the time to kind of mess around with my own stains. Um, so, you know, that's why I'm you know, just trying to say I, don't, I didn't love some things about it, but I still even use it on pro projects today when clients want something stained. With that being said, I do have an upcoming project where the client does want something stained, and there's some things, you know, that I wish were a little bit different by using that stain, and, and that's 
um, gonna be in another video, but I am gonna try, Odie's has pigments that you can use, so I think I am gonna try to invest a little bit of time for this upcoming project so I can keep using with this product line uh, for this stain. But anyways, what I like about Odie's, and I could talk a long time about it, but it's gonna take a lot for me to switch away from Odie's, and here's my process with it. So what I was having trouble with, let me tell you this, what I was having trouble with was when I would stand up to like 400 grit, I was applying the finish with this white pad and I use scotch Bright. I think it's, let me check it right here. It's uh, scotch Bright 7445 and I'll link it. But I don't know if my sanding wasn't getting all the scratches out or if this was putting them in, but one thing I was doing was I was applying this with a random orbital sander and I was doing it um, on the low setting. Um, uh, and what I mean by low setting, I just like I would turn the speed down. So I was using a random orbital, but I felt like this pad, although they say I believe it's rated at like 1500 grit, I felt like it was putting scratches back in the finish. So this is actually the first table that I'm gonna do some experimenting on the other side and I'll let you know what I find. But basically I'm gonna use, after talking to the uh, application specialists at Odie's who were super helpful, they said, you know, maybe try to apply it by hand, which is, it does take a lot of work, takes a little bit of effort, but they said they rarely ever don't apply their finish by hand. So I'm gonna try a section of this by hand on the underside. And I'm also gonna try a section with just, um, just probably like a blue shock towel and see what happens. And if I don't get any scratches, you know, then I think I'm going to, um, you know, do whatever. If I don't get any scratches with this pad, then I'll do the same thing on the top side. And again, when I'm talking about scratches, you would never notice them. I mean, you have to get inches away from the table and they're still hard to see, but you know, I don't like that they're, they're even there at all. So just gonna do a little bit of experimenting with that. But ultimately what I do, my process is super pen, let it dry for 24 hours. And when you apply this, you don't need a lot and you really have to work it into the surface, but apply this really, um, really well, work it into the surface. And I always start with my underside. Then I usually let the underside sit for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And then I start buffing off with, um, honestly, I just use old socks. Don't worry, they get cleaned ahead of time. But I just use socks here, but they recommend uh, cotton towels, just something with that little bit of texture and grip to help get the oil off. But one thing is you wanna make sure you're getting all this oil off the surface. Um, and then after 24 hours, I'll come back and I'll use, I used to use Odie's oil, just their regular oil, but I'm trying to get a little bit higher sheen. So there was basically two issues I was trying to fix with Odie's. Uh, I was getting, I felt like getting swirl marks back in the wood. And so that's where I'm gonna mess with that, this, this project but I also wanted a higher sheen. So wood butter is their, one of their product lines that they recommend if you do want a little bit higher sheen. <clears throat> and then I also sanded from, this is the first project that I went above 400 grit, so I went to 1,000. So I'm hoping between increasing to 1,000 and using the wood butter as the uh, second coat that I'm gonna get that more of that, um, you know, maybe like semi gloss sheen I'm after. Right now it's probably more at the satin level and I would want to get a little bit more to the semi gloss, okay? So I'm gonna to get to it here. Hopefully I, I explained that well, but just to recap really quickly, <clears throat> super pen, put it on the underside with a 3M Scotch Bright 7445. And then after that, if this doesn't leave any scratches, I'm gonna use it on the top side. And um, you know, I'll do the top side as well. 
And then again, making sure you get all the oil off, just keep using clean rags, clean towels, whatever it is until you get all the oil off. But again, really recommend um, like cotton or 100%, I think they call them 100% terry towels or 100% cotton. Um, but anyways, get all the oil off, come back 24 hours later, wood butter just on the top side. So I don't do that on the under. Wood butter on the top side, <clears throat> again, let it sit for maybe 20 to 30 minutes and get that all off. So as always, if you have any questions, uh, you know, I know I'm kind of rambling on here, but if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Hopefully I answered them as, as many of them as possible, but let's get to this. Just wanted to show you the top side, what it looks like. Again, this was sand to 1000 grit. What you saw me doing in that last clip was, I forgot to mention, I do get all the sawdust off or close to all of it off with a blue shop towel. But hopefully you can see just how beautiful the surface is and this without even oil. Oil will just take it to that next level. But just wanted you to be able to try to get a feel for that finish, I mean, it's like it's like glass right now. It looks really, really nice. So, Odie's is just gonna make it that much better. So let's get to putting some super pen on. take a little bit more time to talk about a couple other parts of uh, you know a couple other aspects of Odie's oil here and a couple of things I think I forgot to mention so the first thing though you probably noticed I applied with a blue shop towel I tested on the underside and 240 grit doesn't get rid of every scratch so I wasn't seeing any differences between the blue shop towel and the white scotch bright pad application so honestly I just didn't have the guts to try to apply the Odie's oil with the scotch Bright pad. I just aired on the side of caution, used the blue shop towel, and I'm gonna just test this on a smaller piece one day to see what the scotch Bright does after a thousand grit, sanding up to a thousand grit. But I think the thousand grit did solve one of my big problems, which there's black epoxy in here, and even at 400 grit, I could not get the scratches out. Again, we're talking very faint, but I didn't like it. And if they're in there, I'm really struggling to see them. So I think the thousand grit solved that problem. So it was worth the little extra time to sand up to a thousand grit. Plus it's gonna give me, I think, the extra sheen I'm after. Just a couple other things I wanna mention about ODs. So when, it first, when I first started using it, I was able to reach out to James. This was several years ago. He's the owner of it. And this was before Odie's oil just absolutely exploded and for good reason. But I was able to reach out to him, talk to him directly at the time. And I just loved how passionate he was about his product. I mean, he believes in his product 100%. He uses it on his tables. And, you know, he just was, you know, very big advocate for his product. And obviously he is, but I just love the passion for it. I mean, I would be on the phone with him for hours and he would talk to me about the product and the application of it and just really educate me on everything. And again, you can talk all you want, but his product backed itself up. I mean, it performs like he says it's going to. So again, you can say all the stuff you want. You can be as good of a salesman as you want, but if your product doesn't perform like you're saying it does, it doesn't matter. And his performs like it says, he says it will. And one of the things about it, you know, besides the fact that it's no solvents, non-toxic, food grade, smells amazing, 
for me, I don't have a lot of local clients, you know, especially with my furniture. I have a lot of clients across the United States, which I'm very fortunate for. But part of that is, you know, challenge of your finish better hold up. And if there is an issue, can a homeowner fix it? And that's another thing I love about this product. It can be fixed by homeowners. I've had a couple issues and one was my user error. When I was first learning how to use it, I applied, I think, a little too much and didn't get it all off. And a uh, client was getting just really faint marks in their finish. And then another one, the client had a child and they put black permanent marker, which I don't think there's any finish gonna stop black permanent marker. But what I liked is in both scenarios, <clears throat> I was able to send them some oil, some of my application materials, uh, and explain the application process. They were able to put a new coat of oil on, wipe it off, and it took care of all the issues. Now the black permanent marker a little different, they had to do a little more sanding and so forth, a little more troubleshooting, but for a non-extreme circumstance like this, you know, I don't think you're gonna find a product that you can send to a homeowner, they can put some oil on and take care of an issue if it does arise. And again, those were two circumstances out of many tables I have out there. And, and uh, again, that's a big selling point for me and for homeowners. If there is an issue that arise, arises, this product, as a homeowner, you can easily fix it yourself. Uh, but again, it's, it's rare because this product is so durable. In fact, I have this on a coffee table in my house. No one uses coasters. There's not a single mark on that table. And uh, again, I just really, really like this product. So at this point, again, I think I'm rambling. Hopefully I've given you enough info on Odie's Oil, told you about all the features that I really like. And uh, again, if you have any questions, anything I didn't answer that you'd like to know more about, feel free to leave me a comment or reach out.